Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Nimichek here. I just wanted to give you a little kind of primer on uh, breath testing for bacterial overgrowth or what's known as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, it's still very common. Uh, local GI docs or your primary care, you know, you bring this up to them, you've read either my stuff or somebody else's stuff, and you're like, hey, I, th I think I might have bacterial overgrowth, and they send you off for a breath test. Um, well, you need to know these are incredibly inaccurate tests. I won't be surprised if in a couple of years people quit paying for them. And, um, and so the way we evaluate tests are we things called sensitivity and specificity. All right. And these are, you know, are the, the positives truly positive and are the negatives truly negative? when you are looking at a test. So sensitivity of uh, the breath testing ranges from 50% to about 70%. Okay, now that what that means is, uh, you know, if it says you have the disease, it's only 50 to 70% correct. All right, that's a horrible number. All right, and then likewise specificity if it's saying you don't have the disease, it's only right about 50 to 70%. Now I use this range because there's a bunch of papers that kind of fall into that into that, that window. Now in medicine, just to put this in perspective, in medicine, we like things like 90% sensitive and specific, uh, specific. I mean, that's stretching it. Really, you need things about 95% for each of these so you can, you can help the patient accurately. And the way you think about tests in general is, it's like having a compass, like you, you know, your patient's lost in the woods, my science is kind of a map to the woods, and I have to get them out of there. You know, I basically make them healthy using certain tests. And imagine if you have a compass that only points north like 70% of the time. You know, every time you're taking a reading, so, you know, two times, okay, going, good, good. Third time, it's making you make a left-hand turn. That's wrong, okay? You just end up going round and round in circles. And that's what kind of happens in, in, in diagnosing and treating patients when you don't have very accurate tests. So now people say, well, what are we supposed to do? Well, there's alternatives that are not good ones. All right. Well, unfortunately, you can do an endoscopy and they can go in and try to culture the bacteria there that are uh, growing in the, and you have to go way down. You have to go down to the proximal jejunum. And the problem with that is most of the bacteria can't be cultured like in a little Petri dish and uh, the scopes get contaminated when they put them through your mouth. So you might actually end up growing something that's up in your mouth, not overgrowing in the small intestine. So that's a big problem. Now they can do this in a very accurate way, but it's very labor science intensive. And this is how most of the uh, recent uh, bacterial overgrowth studies are actually being performed, okay? And so uh, they aren't really doing in a prospective trial SIBO testing much anymore, uh, or breath testing, excuse me. Another test people will say, oh, I got a stool sample. And the guy says, it tells me I have bacterial overgrowth. Impossible. Okay, I don't, they may, I'm not saying they'd be dishonest by telling you that, but they just don't understand. You can't do that. There's no way you can, you can determine by what bacteria in the, coming from the rectum has anything to do with the bacteria in the small intestine, okay? There is more work being done on indirectly trying to determine this by leaky gut and looking at some blood testing for that. Um, that's coming along, but not really at a point that, you know, we could have like a SIBO leaky gut blood test or blood panel yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years that doesn't play out uh, because it's the most practical way to get this done, I think, with our, our, our present uh, science. And so people will say, well, how do you know? What do you know? Well, I've learned 
over 20 years that inflammatory stress prevents the brains from recovering. So you get a, you know, a brain injury that doesn't involve bleeding. Okay, let's just talk about that. Concussion or some concussive injuries and you don't recover from that. I happen to know and the science happens to tell us that chronic inflammation is a source of that and I happen to know and science knows that the single largest release of inflammatory cytokines in the body that can occur is through SIBO or leaky gut and so through deduction that's the first place I start. If somebody doesn't recover because they got too much inflammatory stress I start trying to fix the gut. Um, fortunately the majority of patients have some symptoms that are directly attributed to that. So they might have oh, tomatoes and spices up somebody's stomach or this food or that food, what have you. And um, when you give them Rifaximin, they feel better. People say, well, what's that mean? Well, because the only thing Rifaximin can do is balance the gut bacteria by eliminating excessive bacteria out of the small intestine. That's the only thing it can do. That's SIBO. So if you treat somebody and so if they have symptoms, you think, aha, uh -huh, I think they have SIBO. And you treat them with Rifaximin and they get better. That's pretty convincing that they have SIBO. Okay? And you got to go with that. Now, a lot of doctors today versus, you know, in my day, as the old guy says, a lot of doctors today, they're going too fast. Their clinical skills are pretty bad. And they really don't have the confidence to, to make that call. They don't like really deciding anything without some test telling them. Well, in the old days, we never had the tests. We had to rely on these kind of, this deductive reasoning pattern, which is very reasonable and very common throughout all of medicine. So anyhow, don't bother with the breath testing. It's just as apt to give you a wrong answer as anything and lead you astray. And even though the doctors keep ordering it, they just don't know what else to do. I don't think they fully understand this issue and, and how inaccurate these tests are. So hope you find that helpful. Otherwise, you all have a good day.